Hello everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Today we're going to learn about externality. We're going to define what externality is, and then we're going to look at two different types of externalities. So if I look at the definition of an externality, the externality basically, in simple terms, we can say it is the unintended consequences of our actions on a bystander. So it could be a bystander who is near us or is probably far or further away from us, but it is basically how our actions affect the bystanders around us. Now, this is where we say that, you know, normally in economics, we think markets are efficient and markets have markets allocate resources. And we looked at uh, in other chapters before that the market price helps to remove surpluses and shortages. However, one of the things that markets fail to allocate is, do my actions affect people around me? So, and today we're going to look at two different types of externalities. So there are, the two types are positive externality and negative externality. So positive externality is when our actions benefit bystanders. So for example, we may hear if we, let's say, the flowers in our front yard, we may plant a nice garden in our front yard and people around me, I mean, the, my neighbors not only benefit from seeing a nice garden, but because I maintain my property well, and I put up a nice, um, you know, nice plants, nice flowers. I water them properly so it looks really nice in front of my house. So it actually helps to increase the value of not only my house, but also the houses nearby. So that, that is one example of positive externality. Another one would be like vaccine. If I, if I take vaccine, like a flu shot, I not only protect myself, but I also prevent people around me. So that also helps me actually, not only I get protection, but if I don't get the flu, then I cannot spread it to other people near me. So then I also protect the people around me. Other examples are like, you know, maybe I'm listening to a nice uh, song and I'm playing it, but people around me are enjoying that. A negative externality, on the other hand, is when our actions actually negatively affect the bystander. So examples are, and actually negative externalities may have more examples, are like secondhand smoking. I may actually not smoke or I actually may be eating well and I am you know, exercising, doing everything correctly. But if I hang out with someone who smokes and I inhale those, um, um, the noxious vapors from the cigarette, then I also get affected from um, all those negative smoking, uh, even though I am not smoking by myself. Pollution from a factory nearby, because I may live near the factory and, you know, I actually go to work probably near the factory so i'm all i'm pretty much i spend my day near the factory then when i inhale those um dangerous gases like carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide they may cause health issues which it's not really like another person living maybe far away may not have the same effects but since i live around that factory i get negatively affected by those pollution um, noise from my roommate, maybe, is another an example of a negative externality. So if my roommate is playing very loud music, maybe very loud heavy metal songs, I may, that person, my roommate may enjoy that song, but I may not enjoy it and my neighbors may not enjoy it. So that is another example of negative externality. So we're going to use supply and demand diagrams to understand what is going on with negative externalities here and positive externalities and what can we do to reduce the amount of externalities in our society so first let's look at negative externality as we talked about negative externality right here we know that negative externalities can have a bad effect on society so 
let's look at a diagram. So let's first draw our regular demand and supply diagram. Let's say this is of secondhand smoking. So in our case, um, again, we have to write our price and quantity. And this is, let's say, the demand and supply of, let's say, cigarette. So let's say this is the price that we charge for the cigarette. This is the quantity. So and let's say the price of one pack of cigarette is $10. Quantity is $100. Okay. Now, in this case, this is the supply curve that we have used so far. And this supply curve that we call, this is the, let me actually write it in another color. This supply curve is what we call the private cost. If you remember from chapters, uh, from other chapters that we have covered, the supply curve basically tells us what is the cost of producing the cigarette. So the private cost, the supply curve that we have drawn so far, so it just measures how much was spent to produce product. So it doesn't really measure, you know, any other thing. It just measures like, okay, to produce, you know, some number of cigarettes, this is how much we needed to spend. However, we just learned that, you know, there is bystanders are also impacted. So as, you know, whenever somebody smokes one uh, cigarette, the people around them are also affected negatively. So then what happens is these bystanders are also part of that cost. We also have to consider people who are being affected because of the cigarette smoking so the idea here is basically like if you break it you have to pay for it so if my actions are negatively affecting somebody i have to compensate that person so instead of just having this a private cost let's say that every time i smoke a cigarette i actually cause some kind of a uh, damage to another person or some kind of a uh, negative impact on another person and if i put a dollar value on that let's just say it is two dollars so every time i smoke a cigarette so basically let's say i'm smoking 10 cigarettes let's say this costs me two dollars to smoke or let me remove these lines maybe that might be easier to see so let's say that i am smoking 10 units of cigarette or i'm producing 10 units of cigarette so under that scenario, a tenth unit of cigarette. Now to when they smoke that cigarette, the cost of producing that cigarette is $2. So if I look at the supply curve, if at 10 units, if I go up here, let's say that price is $2. Now, after or when that cigarette is smoked it causes negative externality whose dollar amount is is let's say a dollar so every time i smoke or every time somebody smokes this is the cost of producing it but i also create this much which is a one dollar worth of problems for someone else and so then since we said like if you affect somebody if you negatively impact somebody you have to pay for um, the damages so then we say that therefore the cost the cost of the smoking that tenth unit of cigarette should be the two dollars that you know that was used to, that was spent to produce the cigarette plus the one dollar for the negative consequences of the people surrounding it which equals to three dollars so then the total cost should be three dollars so what we end up doing is in our case here is that we know that this supply curve is the private cost we need another supply curve that actually reflects the cost to society and the cost of producing the cigarette so we draw this another supply curve and we call this the social cost curve. So the social cost curve is basically the social cost curve is the curve that reflects 
the cost of producing the cigarette and the cost of on the bystander or the negative externality. Now, if we just to make it simple, if we say that every time we smoke, the amount of negative externality created is one dollar, so then this distance is going to be at all points will be one dollar. <clears throat> so what this means is that let's say if I look at this equilibrium level at a hundred units of smoking, price is ten dollars, but I need to now pay one dollar extra for every unit I smoke. So basically the price is now going to be at eleven dollars. So I should pay eleven dollars. Ten dollars goes to the producer, one dollar goes to each of the people or all the people that were affected by that smoking. So now this is no longer, so we will now consider this red line to be our social cost curve or the true supply curve. So then this value is now going to be our equilibrium price and quantity. So let's say this equilibrium price is $10.50 and the quantity is 85. What that is now telling us is that this is the new price that is charged in the market. 85 units are sold. So the red numbers are now, they are now the socially optimal equilibrium. And we will explain why in a bit. So first, the market price and quantity, they are price equals 10 and quantity equals 100. This was before we took externality into account. But the socially optimal level is going to be, price is going to be 10.5, quantity is going to be 85. So what this means is that, why is this socially optimal? It's because when customers buy the cigarette at $10.50, then $1 goes to, the, to those affected or negatively affected. And $9.5 goes to producer. So, so we will now say then P, this is the socially optimal price. And quantity, this is the socially optimal quantity. So it does two things. But now how do we make people pay for it? So instead of, you know, People will not voluntarily pay this $1 to others so that they can smoke because this, you know, why would they? Because I don't know this person. This person is affected. I really don't care. People smoke because they enjoy smoking and not because, you know, it's going to harm someone else. So the way then governments get around it is that how do they do, how do they collect this amount? So instead, government will tax the cigarette users. So now to get that $1 per unit of cigarette smoking, government will impose a tax on cigarette equal to $1 of or per cigarette. So since each cigarette smoke causes $1 worth of damage, so the government will impose this $1 tax on each person smoking, use that money to, and provide it to the people who are negatively affected by second hand smoke. So if I, I know this diagram is a little, um, there's a lot going on there. So if I draw it a little nicer so that we all can understand it, let us just do that for now. So again, we will write, this is price, this is quantity, this is going to be my demand curve. This is my supply curve. And so this is the market price and this is the market quantity. Now this is, this value is the socially or is the social cost of that product. So this is the, this value is the socially optimal price the lower value that we have in quantity this is the socially and the vertical distance between these two values this is the the cost to bystanders also the amount to be taxed 
So that's vertical number of distance is the amount that we tax or we impose tax on. And this, if we consider them to be the same across every unit smoke, then this should be a parallel line. Now let's look at positive externalities. This idea is similar to negative externality, so it's just the opposite. So positive externality, this is when our actions inadvertently benefit the bystanders. So let's look at we one example is let's say vaccines. So in our case, let's say we start with the same idea as before. This is going to be the demand and supply of vaccines. And we are going to just start with the original market equilibrium. So we have our quantity, or this is my price. This is my quantity. This is the demand for vaccines. This is the supply of vaccines. And again, we have our market price and market quantity. So let's start with $10 and 100 units. So something like vaccine benefits people as, because as we said, when I get vaccinated, I not only protect myself, I also protect other people around me because I don't, don't spread the disease to them. So every time I take a vaccine, let's say I am at, let's say, this point, this is how much I value the vaccine to myself. So the 10th person taking the vaccine, they probably value it at $20. But whenever they take a vaccine, they actually add, let's say, $2 of benefit to people around them. So let's say when I take the 10th vaccine, that person, or let's see, when a person, that person values it at $20. So this is the, we call it the private benefit. So the demand curve is measuring the private benefit of that individual. And the individual is saying that whenever I get a vaccine, I might get an early vaccine because to me, that's the value. But it also benefits the people who associate with the vaccine taker and that benefit is equals let's say two dollars so whenever i take the vaccine let's say to me the value is 20 and the people around me they value it at two dollars so the total social benefit so society's benefit is equals to twenty dollars this is from me plus the two dollars from the people surrounding me. So this is my private one. This is the people around me. So the total value is 22. Now, if we say that every time I take a vaccine, each person gets a benefit of $2, then what I can do is I can draw another curve here. And this red curve, I can call it to be the social benefit curve. So here the demand curve is telling me what is the private benefit. So how much do each private individuals who take the vaccine benefit by taking the vaccine? And this vertical distance is going to be the benefit to society. We said this value is $2 for each vaccine. So for our case, it is $2. So with positive externality, since it benefits other people, including the people, we want more of it. So we want more of it. As opposed to negative externality, we want less of it. So in this case, maybe the, the new intersection between the demand curve or the social benefits curve and the supply curve is at 11 and 120. So just like before, we're going to write those things. So the market price is $10 and market quantity is 100. This is if we did not do anything, but the socially, or let's say this, the social benefit price is 11 and the social benefit quantity is 120. So what they're saying is that the price should be, since this is what the red line is, what people are benefiting from, from the vaccine. So the new price, the equilibrium price is going to be 11 
and the equilibrium quantity is going to be 120. Now, before it was the price was $10, now it's rose to $11. Why would someone pay more? Well, the reasoning here is, well, the customers, basically the vaccine takers, will pay $9. And the other beneficiaries, that is people who are surrounding me who are getting the benefit from the vaccine, should pay me $2 to take the vaccine. So then I can spend $11 to get the vaccine. So the $9 is my benefit, which is, you know, since we said that this distance here, this distance is $2. So even though the price is at 11, the social benefit or the private benefit is at nine. So I am willing to pay $9 and other people should pay me $2 to get that vaccine. Now the question is, why would someone, I mean, I know, I know that they're getting benefited from the vaccine, but why should people pay me to get the vaccine? So in that case, in private markets, this would not work. So nobody would pay me because if they're getting, they know that they're going to get the benefit for free, why should they pay me? So again, this is where the government comes in and government then says, pays us a subsidy of two dollars so that we can go and take the vaccine so it could be a coupon like if you go and take the vaccine here you get two dollars you pay eleven dollars but here's a two dollar coupon which you can use to uh, spend on other things or the government pays us or the government pays the two dollars and we just pay nine dollars there are many ways it could work but basically government pays somehow directly or indirectly pays us a subsidy of two dollars so that we go and take the vaccine. So this is how, when we have positive externalities, we try to enhance the positive externality in society. If we have negative externality, by taxing, we tend to reduce the negative externality. Now in this uh, lecture, what I did is, when it was a negative externality, I used supply curve. I shifted the supply curve to the left and to show that this is how much it should be taxed, this is the cost to society. In other books, actually, they shift the demand curve. So in negative externality, you could either, in this case, restrict supply or restrict demand, and it is fine. Now, either way, it was fine. What we're doing here is the government is basically taxing the person. So the government here is collecting the tax from the suppliers. The government could also tax it from the buyers, and what in that case, what we would do is shift the demand curve to or downwards or to the left to D prime and we would get the same answer. But in this case, we are just looking at the shift in supply just to keep it easier. But uh, I just wanted to just say that in other books, they may also shift demand. So if you ever see that, it's not that this lecture is wrong or that lecture is wrong or it's basically you could use either. Same thing with positive externality. Here, what we did is we looked at subsidizing the person who's taking the vaccine. So we shifted the demand curve to the right. We could have also shifted the supply curve to the right if we wanted to um, basically provide the subsidy to the um, producer so that they produce more at a lower price. We could have shifted the supply curve to the right. In other books, they show it that way, which is also fine. But here, just to keep it easier, I just use the demand curve to show it because it's a little more intuitive when using the demand. Hopefully this was beneficial. If you have any questions, do uh, write down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Have a good day and I'll see you at a later video. Goodbye.